Hey, welcome back. Uh, today's video, what I want to talk about is kind of a, my own custom uh, Pi Toolbox workbook that I put together. And so, you know, one of the great things about Toolbox has been that you can take someone's workbook, you can go ahead and add things to it, remove things to it, customize it, um, you know, make it yours. And so, you know, when uh, Cosworth released, you know, the iRacing support and V14 beta, um, and they gave you a nice uh, workbook that works with the free version of Pi Toolbox. Um, I wanted to make some tweaks to it. There's some things I do differently. There's some things that I wanted to add that weren't there. Um, and so what I, I went ahead and shared that. So I, I'm going to put that up on my website. It's actually already been there. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is show you where to get the workbook. And then we're going to spend a little time walking through it. And, and I'll just kind of talk you through you know, what I changed and why I changed it. And then if you want to use it, great. If you want to take it and customize it for your purposes, great. Um, there's a chance you're going to find things like math channels that maybe are broken. I didn't realize it. So just leave me a comment if you see that. I did try to go through everything and uh, make sure everything looked correct, but sometimes that happens. So let's kind of get right into it. So uh, let's start with, you know, this is the hypodriver.com website. Frankly, it hasn't been updated in a long time. Um, but one of the things I have up there is this resources page. And so there's a lot of things up here you can leverage. Um, if you're an iRacing person, which is really kind of the target for this workbook, this stuff related to the GM performance data recorder is probably not interesting to you. These are definition files for that system. Um, but then some other things like the map files that you use within Pi Toolbox. Um, you see me do a lot with VIR, and so I put the VIR uh, kind of map I put up here. Um, and then there's a bunch of workbooks. And so these are ones that I've made and updated over time. Um, there'll be other versions of this iRacing um, workbook as well as we go. But right here in the iRacing Lite, if you just click on that and download it, you're going to get a uh, basically this PWB file. Um, that's what you're going to open uh, in Pi Toolbox, and that's what gives you the workbook that then you can go ahead and load your data into and do analysis. So just wanted to show you real quick where to actually get it. But let's go ahead and open up Pi Toolbox. And as it's loading, I already have the workbook open. Um, it, you know, if you want to, after you download it, you need to open it. It's just file, open, browse to where you have the actual workbook. And then you just double click on it and, and it'll open. So we're not going to do it again since it's already open, but that's how you go ahead and open it. So what have we done differently? So the first thing, I've talked a lot about splits, uh, using splits to find time. For me, it's a big tool. And so what I did is I replaced this first worksheet they had that just had the image with a couple different displays. So typically for me, I'm comparing two different outings pretty regularly. Uh, so what I did is I, I set up the um, two copies of the split report that could then look at two different outings. So this is already set up so that in the iRacing task up here, the green outing is this, the red outing is this. In this particular case, they're two copies of the same outing, so the data looks exactly the same. But that way I can actually look at both outings, look at my sector times, and actually look across them and say, well, in that second outing that I go faster in sector three than I did in my first outing in any laps. And so it gives me a way to compare multiple things. Um, the other thing I added is, it, you know, this is just, you know, tailor this to your uses, but, you know, this is a tabular outing report. This is where there's just a bunch of channels that maybe you want to look at holistically uh, across your, um, your outing. And so again, two copies of it, exact same breakdown. This is the green, this is the red. But, you know, here I have incident count. So, you know, did I go off track? Did I hit something? Here I can tell, okay, this lap, these laps actually had incidents in them. Um, you know, interesting to look at things like, well, what was the max lateral G? Um, so I've got some data here. Uh, this particular channel actually has a, um, uh, a filter on it, kind of a moving average filter on it. Um, but, you know, just things like max speed, uh, we'll talk about under, look at understeer angle in a bit, but just different channels um, that you might not find helpful looking at an overview of the outing. Now, while we're talking about overviews of the outing, for some of the displays, I don't want to just show a lap. I want to show data from the entire outing. 
And so over on the left here, I've created a second task and I just call it full session. And so you can load a different or the same outing into here. But what's unique about this outing is if you go down to the uh, properties for that, actually properties for the task, you'll see initial selection is all outings. So if I look, click on this, you can see it's actually all the laps. So you're gonna see some displays where I don't wanna just look at a given lap. I wanna look at all of them holistically to get a sense of how things trended over the session. So if you wanna look at stuff across the session, you add it to this task, you, you point your display at this task, and that's how you can do it across the entire session. So that's the first major change is, is this opening sheet. And again, you just kind of click and drag the bar to get a better view of one or the other. Um, but splits were the big one for me. On the driver tab, this is you know the same thing that uh, Cosworth provides. The, I changed a couple things. The first thing I changed is uh, under the lap deltas display, we still have our, our delta compare. So this is our delta time across the lap. Let me actually zoom back. Actually, let me do a couple things. Let me load the correct map for VIR. And then let me zoom out. So just like in my finding time video, like this is the lap delta time. You can look through that and try to highlight areas where you made it uh, improved or lost time between two laps. I have another channel I use, which is just a derivative of that. And so it's the rate of change of the lap delta compare. So for me, sometimes it's easier to look and see, you know, where are those big spikes? Because that means it was a big change um, in delta time. So it helps me kind of key in and say, what are the things that are the big movers? Um, by looking at the, the lap time change. And they're all lined up. So you can see again here this big spike. We could go look and see why that happened in data. I won't, I won't dwell into that here, but I think quick look, it looks like it was just uh, kind of a, a lower minimum speed. But again, for me, that's just another tool that I like to use uh, when comparing laps. The other thing I did is uh, I changed the values they had down here in these uh, outing reports. The ones that were there for me weren't terribly meaningful, um, but I thought you might want to look at your in-car uh, adjustments and compare those across laps. So I added the front roll bar settings, your ABS setting, your brake bias, and your TC setting, traction control setting. So that way, if you've been tweaking things in the car during the session, you can very quickly look down and see, okay, oh, I had my my ABS at seven instead of eight, or I have my TC at three instead of two. Um, it just makes it easier to kind of bring that forward uh, as you're doing your analysis. Driver braking data, no changes here. This is just like um, what Cosworth delivered. Same with uh, the throttle brake analysis. And then what I did is um, they had their own worksheet focused on tire analysis. Um, I have a slightly different way of doing things. And so I, I wanted to kind of bring that forward as well as show you just a couple of neat things you can do related to chassis setup. So this last tab replaces their tire tab with what I call the tire chassis uh, worksheet. And so there's a couple things in here as it loads itself up. And so there's lots of ways to kind of slice and dice this, um, but for me, this is tire temperature versus lateral grip. So specifically, this is the average tire temperature versus lateral grip. This is tire pressure versus lateral grip. And these, all these displays, you see all the green? They're all referencing the full session task. So they're looking at all 16 laps of the outing um, and showing that data here. So what is this useful for? Well, for me, um, particularly the tire temp versus lateral grip, what you do is start getting a feel for, okay, look at my, um, these are my data points, right? So left to right is, you know, positive, negative lateral Gs. This is tire temp on the left and degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, by the way, that's another big change I made. Again, for some people, they'll hate this. Some people, they'll like this. But I did change a lot of the units. I changed uh, a lot of the units to uh, imperial units just because, again, for me, that's how I, I tend to operate. So... Um, but you can see, you know, looking at kind of the shape of the lateral G data, uh, they're colored based on um, 
which tire it is. So let's go, I'm going to click the Alt 2. And so you can see there's actually four different plots on here. And if you decide you don't want to look at all four tires, you can just take them out. But here we've got, you know, all four tires against lateral acceleration, and then they're color coded. And they're color coded just like um, you see in the, the channel definition. So right up here, we'll give you the color coding for the tires. So what do I do with this? Well, I can get a feel of where does my grip start to come up temp wise and where does my grip start to fall off? Obviously this is entirely dependent on you as a driver, kind of pushing the car to the limit, but you can kind of see from this shape here, right? The grip is kind of low, you know, gets about kind of, uh, peakish, I'll say, around, you know, 135, 140 Fahrenheit, and it's pretty consistent uh, until about 180, and then you start seeing it drop off. Uh, some of these kind of outliers up here, the temp's really high. Uh, this is most likely a spin, um, so a spin or a slide, or the tire temp just kind of spikes as a result. So um, this kind of, again, gives you a feel, say, okay, what's, what's a good tire temp for grip? Uh, in the car, exact same thing on pressure over here. So um, in this case, what you see is pretty much, you know, where the pressure is peaked out uh, and around 27 and a half is where I was getting uh, generally best grip. Um, it'd be interesting to see if you continued it or maybe started at a higher pressure, um, whether you would reach uh, a higher hot pressure and grip would fall off. So you can kind of play with that. And then the two bottom displays, uh, you know, I'll admit I don't do a lot with setup and iRacing. Um, I do a decent amount with you know my actual car, my Corvette that I, I track that's heavily modified. But these are things that I found useful kind of in the real world, if you will. Um, so this one here is uh, the front to rear roll rate. And so that'll give you a feeling of balance, um, a sense of uh, kind of being able to quantify if you will balance of the car. Uh, for me, the way I've used it historically is um, if I make a set of, of changes to the car, uh, you know, uh, shock wise or spring rate wise, um, and I drive it and I like the balance, I'll kind of keep a note of um, what this uh, polynomial looks like. So this is, by the way, this is another one of the features of these XY charts. Right click polynomial, you have a polynomial of multiple orders. I just tend to look at the one single order polynomial and it gives me a feeling of kind of, you know, this 0.90 is kind of where I am front to rear roll ratio. Um, and so again, I can kind of say, okay, I know what I, I have a setup I like, I know what the front rear roll ratio is, what else do I need to do to get there um, if I make other changes to the car. And then this uh, lower right hand display, uh, this is just ride height versus speed. And so again, we've got the, the kind of the average uh, polynomial line in here. And so you get a sense of, in this case, rear ride height, uh, how the rear drops with speed. Um, you know, these kind of up and down squiggles are results of acceleration and braking um, and, you know, corners and going over hills and such. But this gives you again, a sense of uh, how the suspension is compressing, um, you know, due to downforce as you're building speed. For any of these XY charts, you can cycle through the channels on them by using the up and down arrows. So in this particular one, there's only two. So if I use the up arrow, now I'm looking at uh, the polynomial for the, the front right height and the rear right height. So you can see the front's not compressing as much as the rear. Make of that what you will. Um, but again, gives you a sense of overall effect in this case of arrow on the, the platform itself. And so the last thing uh, I wanted to show you is I took, I've been kind of steadily collecting math channels over the years, you know, going to training, reading books, there's some great resources out there. Um, and I went through my collection and tried to pull out ones that I thought might be valuable for iRacing and added them. So um, they do, many of them do require constants so the constants in this case, I just did simple constants. Um, I have another video where I talk about using Excel spreadsheets, um, but these are values that some of these will, you'll need to know for your vehicle, for the math channels to work correctly. So, you know, uh, I actually have 
that's not right. Front track with a capital T and a small t. You have to see actually where that's being used. But these are all millimeters. Um, you know, motion ratios, um, you know, front track, rear track, um, uh, you know, steering assist is useful for acronym, uh, sorry, Ackerman um, um, kind of steering angle. So again, you've got um, different, it's actually, you've got different uh, um, kind of constants that you'll need to modify for your particular usage. And then on the math channel side, there's a lot in here to play with. And some of them are actually duplicative with things that Cosworth provided because I just imported them in. Some of them are just channels where I've aliased the name because I have workbooks expecting, for instance, accelerator instead of throttle. And so in this case, accelerator just returns the throttle value. Um, but a lot of things to look at, like accelerator velocity. How quickly are you applying the throttle? Um, is a car unsettled because you're, you're too quick on the gas or too quick off the gas? Ackerman steering angle. Uh, someone was asking questions about trying to quantify understeer, and so one of the ways to do that is using this. Um, a number of these are just channels that Cosworth already included. I uh, added a lot of channels relative to uh, shocks, and so um, these are, uh, you know, effectively taking uh, iRacing data as well as knowledge of the motion ratio and then calculating a new channel called the damper position. And then you can do things like high speed, low speed, uh, acceleration rate of the damper, velocities. Um, so those of you really into shock tuning, I'll be honest, I'm, I'm pretty weak in that area, um, but you have a lot that you can plot and look at. So again, I won't kind of go through all of these, um, but again, this just gives you a sense of different things that um, I've added to the workbook uh, for you to play with. Like use the data, play around with things, look at your your setups, um, and find what works for you, and try to quantify it. So, I uh, hope you find this useful. Uh, again, this is the September 2025 workbook. I expect there'll be future workbooks that uh, will be, you know, changes or different. Um, I'll also likely do uh, a workbook for the non-light version that has more displays in it. Uh, once kind of that gets released and I can get a license. Uh, but this is something that should work for everybody. Um, so I hope this uh, helps and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.